Hello everyone, welcome. This is the Daily Dharma, and my name is Dina with Empressive Warrior. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We've switched up the first deck, and lately, yesterday and today, I've been wanting to start with the Tao Te Ching deck. This seems to give us a good uh, symbolic saying to kind of as a jumping off point. I just love the Tao. I don't know what they those of you out there have been exposed to it much on that, but it seems to just make sense. It addresses the hermetic principles of um, how we govern ourselves is how our world responds to us. All right, I feel this one. Oh, there's the 101 when I said that. Okay, we have a 54. 63 and 19. 19 came out yesterday. Um, throw away holiness and wisdom and people will become a hundred times happier. Throw away morality and justice and people will do the right thing. Throw away industry and profit and there won't be any thieves. If these three aren't enough, just stay at the center of the circle and let all things take their course. There is absolutely something about this three energy. If you uh, were somebody that caught yesterday's daily dharma from this broadcast and not a timeless person, I was told, <clears throat> compelled to pull three daily dharmas on three different timelines, three different approaches to the chakra activation happening right now. And I feel like everybody is changing in some specific ways due to certain types of triggers and certain types of stumbling blocks. So there's something about this three energy that kept coming up. And if you wanted to look back, it comes out in the Tao Te Ching messages. It came out in several other things. It's the, uh, for me, three is the number of the Empress and the number of the Divine Feminine, but it's also the number that I, that, okay, for the Feminine, it's the Maiden Mother Crone type of mach maturation cycle from the innocence and the receptive mode of childhood and that innocence moving into the development of one's own holding creation and creative expression and then moving forward into the wisdom of having experience and moving beyond the um, the I want to call it the illusion of creation for outer uh, validation or outer status or success or monetary gain and it's more in the older years as an expression of one's unique individual magic. And the crone is very, very magical in that way. But they all hold magic. But then also on the other end of things, with the organized religion, they took that trinity and they created the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So how much different is that? It comes out of order, but it's still the cross of matter, if you will. So as above, so below, as within, so without. As the universe, so the soul at the center. There's something here about that three energy in all of our lives that wants to be called back in and about witnessing the sacred flow of things and m maturing the self. And we've also got Saturn has been retrograde for some time at the time of this broadcast, and it will continue through the Lionsgate portal that we keep talking about. Yesterday we had the three chakras popping out, a solar plexus, heart, well, I guess there were four, solar plexus, heart, third eye, 
um, well, those are the ones we had, but um, I was looking through some other people's channelings and some others also called in the crown, which we have been talking about a bit as well, as the activation is going on now. So it seems like that is coming through here in the cards from yesterday as well. Let's just keep going for today's message. 63. Act without doing, work without effort. Think of the small as large and the few as many. Confront the difficult while it's still easy. Accomplish the great task by a series of small acts. The master never reaches for the great. Thus, she achieves greatness. When she runs into a difficulty, she stops and gives herself to it. She doesn't cling to her own comfort. Thus, problems are no problem for her. Beautiful, right? So... How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. How do you climb the mountain? One step at a time. 54. Whoever is planted in the Tao will not be rooted up. Oh, and before I forget to say, I'm really um, talking about timing with this. Timing being proactive and um, making that plan and taking the steps without misgivings or self-doubt. So, okay, 54. Whoever's planted in the Tao will not be rooted up. Whoever embraces the Tao will not slip away. Her name will be held in honor from generation to generation. Let the Tao be present in your life and you will become genuine. Let it be present in your family and your family will flourish. Let it be present in your country and your country will be an example to all countries in the world. Let it be present in the universe, and the universe will sing. How do I know this is true? By looking inside myself. That microcosm, as the universe, so the soul. It's that heart-based activation here, living from the higher heart. And so with the Lionsgate portal, we have that alignment of our sun and Sirius B, and that in many people's estimation is more of the binary central sun that we also have a larger cycle with. So this is Lionsgate portal is considered with that alignment, that is considered to be the new the new cosmic galactic year, the new solar year um, from the view of the cosmic alignment versus the Earth's alignment with the sun. So the way that we take our calendar year right now is just the Earth's ingress, or excuse me, the sun's ingress from earthly looking out in the sun, seeing it in the backdrop of entering into the sign of Aries, the constellation of Aries. And so this alignment with Sirius B used to align up to the pyramidal structures in, is it Gaza? Giza? Pyramid of Giza. Jesus. So anyways, yeah, there's something here with the specific timing and the location, giving ourselves to the difficulty for the moment. Because if we're doing something for money, yeah, throw away industry and profit and there won't be any thieves. So if you're not busy trying to make money doing something, no one's going to see the artistry perhaps of what you're doing and there won't be any copycat energy keeping things humble in that way or you won't perceive of any thieves because you won't be making money from it so it's free knowledge it's free sharing such as YouTube platform right 75 is under the deck when taxes are too high people go hungry when the government is too intrusive people lose their spirit and for the people's benefit trust them Leave them alone. Ah, there's a couple references to government right here. And I'm sensing this uh, thing that's been going through in my mind. Um, this country, I would say, my country, the U.S., seems to be, I don't want to offend anybody, but it's almost impossible. It seems to be very... Um, very full of ourselves over here thinking that everybody wants to be like America but there are a lot of 
amazing attributes of many different cultures that would that would seem to far outweigh the value systems that can sometimes eclipse the intention or the ego identity that can come through believing in your greatness and running around talking about your greatness when you haven't encountered or looked at anyone else's greatness. And I don't know why I'm saying that, but there's these losing people, not becoming too intrusive. Uh, both sides want to talk about what they don't want others to tell them not to do, but then they want to tell the other side not to tell them to not do it, and then in so doing, they tell the other side what they should not be doing and what they should do to make themselves feel more comfortable. And I think that people do that in in all walks of life when they're in their ego. What fell out was realization. The frequency of realization supports the internal process of becoming aware of our heart-centered truth as well as the external process of becoming our highest expression in this world. Under the deck is healing. And what else? Compassion has been a frequent flyer yesterday and days before. The Divine Feminine, 21 becomes a 3, as we said. We'll put her right in the center here. Fertility, perfect. So that's an em Empress-type energy. The fertility cycle is from the, the cusp, the threshold of the movement from the maiden to the mother is that blooming of the feminine where it's in its most receptive state to fertility or co-creation or procreation and I don't want to make this all about um, the, the physical act of pregnancy I want to talk about this in the mental energetic and emotional senses of the word the fertility of the divine feminine is the point where we go from innocence and unknowing of our potential because the greatest potential, the biggest powerhouse is perhaps the sacred womb, the seed that um, hasn't quite been pollinated, it is ultimate infinite potential in a lot of ways. Which DNA will um, perpetuate the next part of the species? And then where was that? Uh, the her name will be held in honor from generation to generation so it's about creating something that outlasts you perhaps and think about how many artists and philosophers and change makers poets writers they live their whole lives in anonymity and um, others didn't understand or didn't appreciate and these people may have become um, mired in addictions. I'm thinking of who was it that drowned in the puddle and then there were others that people were stealing their their um, their ideas such as what Tesla with his his free energy and the government became intrusive and tossed his lab or the powers that be, the powers behind governments perhaps. And um, yeah, so there's something here about the change bringers of this generation and being at the point of all potential. And the realization point here is like that pollination point where compassion, the realization of compassion in, in our life and for ourselves and other things is allowing the Divine Feminine to be in that ultimate, youthful, innocent, pure potential waiting for the quickening of the, of the, the fertility cycle here, waiting for inspiration or waiting to express in in that way. Synergy. So I'm seeing it immediately. Look at fertility here and synergy. Look at the color palettes on these two. It's like um,
it's almost like I'm seeing the couple things. There's um, see the tiny nature of all those little things in the center there. It's almost like a flower that is opened up and has that complex double bloom with the inside, like a passion flower, how, to, how it has all of those tiny stamen and little finger-like things coming out of the very center of it. And then has the initial smaller petals in the center, but then larger petals and perhaps even a flaming, or a framing, flaming, ring of fire, that flame, it, frame around its bloom of the foliage and whatnot. And it seems like, like the, the opening, the receptivity, the blooming of something. And then this, to me, is looking like uh, the swelling after the flower has been pollinated, then the flower gives way and the fruit develops, right? So the pollination, so what is this? An inspiration or an idea is being changed the approach to something is being changed and we want to add in this element of joy, peace, and um, creative flow here. And this change is bringing in a new cycle that changes something from the flowers and into the fruit that can be ultimately harvested and that feeds the body and creates that legacy. So there's this old quote I used to have on one of my cubicles back in the day to keep me sane in cubicle life. And it said, the flowers will outdo, no, the fruit will outdo what the flowers have promised. And I'm feeling that again. So yeah, it's like um, a return to innocence helps us to tap into that flow state here and there's some sort of a shift here this compassion seems the antithesis to this materialism that they're talking about um, holiness wisdom morality judgment justice industry and profit all being these blocks like wanting to do the right thing and in so doing being just like everybody else versus just staying at the center of the circle and letting things take their course um, staying in our center and doing what we enjoy and what we do best whether or not we think it's profitable when we're called to do something group think was at the bottom of the deck and I split it to middle world. Interesting. So if we're letting the outer world dictate the types of things that we do in our daily lives, then we're becoming just a slave to that homogeny and that group think energy where when we're in our innocence, we're not worried or aware of how how others will respond that's not even entered into into the picture yet because that doesn't come in until the mother the mother phase is where we have all of this responsibility we have to care for the whole tribe um, we have some urge to create and to provide and to create a legacy status reputation those third dimensional middle world concerns and pressures and socialized norm, um, norming all comes in and puts pressure on the feminine versus the opening. The pressure constricts and the flower doesn't quite get that full bloom. And I was thinking today in my pre-meditation how environment is so indicative of things such as habitual um, chronic 
patterning, behavior. Um, what were we just speaking about last night? Um, compulsion and the urge to to do something coming from thoughts that become things and that craving. Craving was the word. And so, yeah, there's, um, I lost it. I'll leave it where it's at. We'll come back if it comes up. So I'm being already drawn into the card that flipped out. Jeweled web connectivity. This to me in the moment is looking a little bit like Fireflies, even though it's intended to be a web that's maybe glistening. Oh, and I'm seeing some dragonflies around. So it seems like this bit of bioluminescence in the moment, like having new eyes to see something. And it's almost like little glowing orbs of dew and being able to see the energy behind things in, that are mundane in your environment, like like bringing something to life. Like, you know, this person could have just drawn a web, black and white, but they chose to make it about, about something else, something more magical. So there's this darkness with the light coming up through the dark. And it talks about connectivity. Okay, so that's where I was going with that. So addiction and connectivity, that's that's the link. Okay, so what I was thinking about is the, the compulsive behavior is, is something that you can measure in rats, and it has been done. If you surround the rats in a very sterile, controlled, boring environment and isolate a rat, and then you give it water and you give it um, some water that's laced with, I think it was cocaine or something like that, and that rat will chronically go back and just get higher and more and more in OD, ultimately, where if then you take the same group of rats um, that you've just been studying doing all of this, and you place them in um, a box where there aren't very many resources and there isn't enough space. They'll compete, they'll stop reproducing, they will attack each other. Um, the scarcity of resources makes them aggressive. And then if you take those same types of situations and then you take the rats and put them in a very um, sensory uh, rich environment where they have stimulation, they have plenty of room, plenty of resources, plenty of habitat, so there's no competition, they all begin to thrive. And they, if they have access in that great environment to both the water and the drug, they'll tend to leave the drug alone entirely. So this can be seen in people as well, where when we're left to our own devices, some people really have a huge creative impulse. They have a great inner dialogue. They don't miss peopling. I'm one of those type of people. But as I've mentioned before, sorry to repeat the story, but when I quit my day job, I noticed soon thereafter that some of that creative impulse comes through connectivity for sure, and it's on the peopling level more than just social awareness because, or your social media pages because your awareness of that is different. It's still robotic. It's still... Um, it's much different. So there's some type of a need for others with synergy, healing, and creativity, or compassion and connectivity, but we've been talking about the co-creative potential. And being pollinated, you know, monoculture versus a diverse, uh, a, a diverse garden, let's say, has all kinds of flowers or it has all kinds of fruit and veg or something of that nature, then you're going to have all kinds of different plants that are, some are going to put nitrogen in the ground, some are going to take nitrogen out of the ground. Um, so certain things go with each other, the companion plantings where other things will, will not do well if they're 
put together, it actually interferes with their growth and their pollination, and nothing will fruit. So the same type of a thing with people in the wrong environment, stuck in a cubicle perhaps, there's a lack of connectivity even amongst the people that are right next to you. Interesting. As I say that, we have a couple of cards popping out. Stranger Curiosity. Look at him with his little wings. Energetic and realistic. So he seems he seems interesting. Okay, overflow, overwhelm and plenty, 43. So yeah, in the monoculture, there's um, they're very susceptible to whatever that one crop is susceptible to and they're also the soil will be depleted of what they suck and it will be overwhelmed with what it puts back in so so overflow overwhelm and plenty at first glance it seems like there's plenty of people around but it's like feeling alone in a room full of people. Interesting. Like maybe if you are surrounded by people in your everyday life, you still are not having the same, well, it's like not identifying with those individuals and not getting that inspiration from those individuals that you might get in a different environment. And maybe you only put yourself in situations where you are with certain types of people. Certain people will always put themselves with people who are seemingly doing better or have better status so that it reflects well on them. Other people will surround themselves with people that aren't as, as educated or affluent so that they can feel that they're better than those other people. So this may be talking about, oh, and here it is again. I'm suddenly drawn to the entire building is reflected, but in a swaying form. In look at the reflection in the pool below. Can you make that out in the camera? Try to move it around and see if you can get that view and upright. There is definitely something about the reflections in the water and after yesterday's broadcast I was uh, watching someone else and this individual talks about how she believes she's scrying when watching her cards and I forget about scrying being when you're watching bodies of water or important water uh, you can see visions in the surface of the water, the images that come to mind, bend, change, and, and create some type of a dialogue with your intuitive self. It's very interesting. So yeah, there's some... Um, There's definitely a lot in that picture, and I'm seeing also that the stranger is casting a reflection in the water below himself, too. Look at the water below this guy. Stranger, curiosity. It's like there's some uh, soul resonance with an individual that you're kind of intrigued by or this individual by you. I feel it's possibly mutual. And there, you may be connected through the World Wide Web, through social media, something like that. Um, or through other people. It may be some friend of a friend or um, a friend's boyfriend's friend group or something like that. Somebody you know through the through the pipeline. Pipeline. What is it about the pipeline? 
And I was seeing that when I said that there's all these, uh, it, at the top, it looks like he's in a forest, but down below there are those trees out there. It's almost like having, have you ever had a lucid dream where you are dreaming possibly about somebody, it may be somebody that you only are acquainted with, never really thought about, and all of a sudden in the moment, there's eye contact in the dream and it becomes lucid and it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like we're in the same room together. You startle awake and you're like, oh my gosh, how embarrassing I was dreaming about this stranger um, on the bus route or I don't know, take the bus, maybe you do. But there's some type of a, a connection and it may be a mutual dream and many of us are not in the place where we can remember our dreams and then so maybe one person remembers the other person doesn't or maybe both people don't remember this connection from either past life or energetic realms where there was some type of a there's some type of an entwined energy here I'm seeing just these sparks flying around and like maybe fireworks in we're doing this right after the 4th of July, and I know a lot of folks do a lot of fireworks, sparklers, that type of thing. It's interesting there. One more. Heart home. We've had that one quite a bit. Compassion is what that says. So we have compassion on the board twice here. So very interesting. There's some type of a, maybe a friendly stranger, or... It could even be a new guide stepping forward for you. Moon Maiden, new beginnings under the dot. Check that out. So, we were talking about the Maiden. Heart Home. There's something about a return to innocence here. This healing of returning to your innocence and being curious and creative. Moving out from... A sense of stagnancy here by a return to compassion so I keep feeling like this overwhelm card is a tear experience like like a remembrance we had the remembrance card something coming through that is a triggering moment or there's some realization, a revelation, an overwhelming opportunity or invitation. So yeah, maybe you had some kind of a dream where you were connected or engaged with someone in a way that isn't indicative of the way that your relationship is in the waking. And there's some type of a, I feel like it's, it's an attraction on an energetic level. It, and so many people get confused with attraction. You can be attracted to an energy of someone without being attracted to them intimately um, or sexually, right? It doesn't mean that because you split Tai Chi rising, just because somebody is interesting or appealing to you um, doesn't necessarily mean that you are any... I mean, maybe for somebody there's some uh, gender curiosities or um, sorting out in that level, but sometimes, like, like let's say, okay, I've read before that if you are, for instance, kissing somebody in a dream, it's not necessarily about the physical aspect, it's about the sharing of, of breath, the sharing of essence in the dream, and it's about the identification and the melding and mixing of the personalities, and um, it's the bonding that is being called out in some type of a way. Uh, of course, you need to put your own symbols on your own dreams and go with your intuition, but somebody here is drawn to something else. And so at this split, many hands of the goddess in tai, tai Chi rising, 
you're being guided in some type of a way to continue to raise, raise your vibration. So if you've been overwhelming yourself with things that, like making mountains out of molehills, uh, stressing yourself out, making assumptions or something here based on old fear or triggers, um, or if it's just stress or being in the wrong environment, there's some type of a need to come back into your innocence, back into your compassionate heart space about something to release to release tension. And it and it comes down to connecting with other individuals, the right type of inner individuals for the next leg of the journey to um, cross pollinate. So some people, this stranger is like maybe some people that don't believe the same things as you. Maybe people from um, different countries, different government structures or belief structures, uh, different cultures or ethnicities. There's something about um, not staying stuck in old ways in ha having others to assist us in raising our vibration through exposure to other ideas and ideals. That's part of the legacy and the experience and wisdom of becoming the crone here, I believe, male or female, right? Seeing turquoise lotus mother. So lots of mother energies. One more radiant moon of compassion. Lots of moon energy. So at the time of this broadcast, we just had our Cancer new moon, and we're in the last quarter pushing our way into the full moon cycle. Um, and then we're going to be at the new moon just um, at the end of this month and then it'll be the next moon cycle in uh, just after the Lionsgate portal. So this next 30 days between the coming full moon and then the, just before the next full moon, we're just about um, 30 days out, which is just more than 28 day moon cycle. And so there's something culminating under our noses here, I feel. And I feel like the many hands of the goddess is like, it's time for you to move through, to see things for what they truly are or are not creating and assisting with in your life, our lives. And this is going to be shifting when we have this alignment. So let's see. There's something about about gathering with the right group of people so that everybody's resources come together and creates this expansion, this swelling the swelling yeah like swelling up welling up and with tears like maybe some reconnection or reunion or rededication in some way or surprise party or something like that or surprise gathering it seems like like with this stranger there's this aspect of um yeah let's just move on what comes out <sighs> badra kali i don't know why i attempt some of these you guys can not that for yourself she seems to be her eyes seem to be unfocused like she's seeing something in her mind's eye that isn't apparent, but she feels it. And we've got these orange gemstones here, sacral chakra. 
I'm sensing that this is, it looks to me like almost a Medusa crown. I'm seeing these snakes on her crown, but it, it does appear to be that fiery type of a crown energy and the red around this. And even the red around the shadowy areas of her. It's like, I feel like she's, there's this, swelling or fiery aspect of the heart. Mm. <clears throat> I'm reluctant to say this, but I know that certain people, especially at middle age, when they haven't healed their heart or really tapped into that sense of empathy and compassion and um, self-care, they become distracted and their heart chakra is under too much stress and you'll see people with heart issues, swelled arteries and um, maybe enlarged hearts or something and maybe there's a close call with a family member my condolences if anybody has anything going on that is traumatic or troubling but I'm seeing that this is it's obviously a part of growth but it's also something that brings us straight back to what matters and to watching somebody deal with a life-threatening issue that brings us right back to the timing and estimation of our own our own use of energy, our own use of our divine time, and how fleeting that time can truly be, and the opportunities that we chose to take, and the things that we choose not to um, deal with can come out, like those tears in the heart. Yeah, it's like a, a heart activation has been coming through, and this one feels like it may be through some type of strange happening, being in, in a place with a bunch of strangers, such as maybe like a hospital or even something else like that. And what is her message for us here? 14. Our wild divine mother knows when to become gentle with our hearts, bestowing sweetness that liberates us from fear. Though you may have faced much struggle and challenge on your path, though it may seem only the most powerful intensity could stem the tide of negativity, the Dark Mother of Grace will conquer the obstacles to your freedom with gentleness. She manifests her now, herself now as Hadra the Gentle. She will calm the waves of emotion, eradicate doubt and despair, and provide safe and graceful passage through all difficulties. Yes, grace under fire. In this heart activation, and where were we talking about difficulties? The master never reaches for the great, thus she achieves difficult. Just she achieves greatness when she runs into a difficulty. She stops and gives herself to it. She doesn't cling to her own comfort. Thus, problems are no problem for her. The amorous loot is all about your energy rising, just like that Tai Chi rising. It's um, that divine high-pitched, high-frequency voice and music. You've won a victory, beloved, a victory over the past, and the amorous loot is sounding through every cell of your being, heralding your rising vibration as you leave fear behind you once again. In fact, the loot says you're growing fast and spiritually you're, you are outgrowing your old life even more so. When your vibration changes, so too does your life, beloved. This is natural. It's safe and loving for you to realize that which no longer feels right for you. No matter how much it was important in your old life, it may not have the same place in your new life. So whether you're connecting with others in different walks of life or moving home or uh, or anything. It's just talking about 
it's time for you to move into a better environment. And maybe this is for some of us, you know, moving into cooperative housing or, or something where, like, like for an aged person who is living on their own, maybe you don't necessarily need help and assistance. And yeah, maybe you don't want to feel like an old person surrounded by people with canes and people that may be sick or memory failing. Uh, dexterity or, or mobility issues, but maybe, maybe in the right environment, looking around at all of your options, maybe there's one that has a bunch of inclusive group activities, has a lot of energetic individuals right around your same age level or interest level. Maybe there's just this need to go to a community center and connect and interconnect with other individuals or to help other people on their healing journey. That's been coming out a lot recently. Um, or, you know, many people are now trying to live in going beyond the homestead concept of living on your own. And even those who are, as I sometimes call it, chronically single, but recognize the value of living amongst other people in type of a tribe type of an environment where everybody has their own skills, their own wares, and their own contribution to the whole so that no one's competing. Everybody is working for the common good of, of, the, of the established um, the established group objectives. So new moon, here we go again, that new beginnings with the moon maiden. There's something definitely coming through, potential spark, sow seeds and realign. So yeah, recontemplating what needs to change and where you're going. I have mad respect for you. I don't want to lose myself again. Joy, gaslighting, manipulation, look deeper. Synchronicity, luck, and divine intervention with ch chakra activation. What would your best friend say? <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's a choice to look into the, um, the quality of life and how to connect more in a more fulfilling way. So that your creative cycle in your end years is peaceful and fulfilling rather than empty and solitary. You know, there's a time and a place for everything. Maybe even just taking on a roommate or moving into a mother-in-law, father-in-law suite with your in-laws or your children. And this can work for young or old getting a pet, <clears throat> having plants, and literally having <clears throat> seeds. Then we have the seven crown chakra, and it did come in reverse, remembering that we had that gaslighting. So also for others, if you're living in an environment where the people are, even if they're family, friends, or otherwise, where they're messing with your head or trying to make you feel like you're losing it or like you don't have the capacity, you know, don't be, <clears throat> don't be uh, stuck in a situation where you feel like you have a double option and there's only two options for you and it's either be solitary or go into um, an institutional environment like, um, you know, don't make yourself crazy in that type of a way there are more options than you may have realized in the past when you recognize what your desires are and what your skills are and, and what kind of contribution you'd like to make in the rest of your um, time in, in the situation. And then I'm seeing legalities, 3D contracts, dispute, and escalation. So this may be splitting up of property or... Um, could be an estate. We talked about the heart issues here. Um, somebody 
may have lost themselves in something. Meditation brings solutions. I have one on the floor. I need stability, a best friend, lover, partners, or so absolutely. I feel like somebody even maybe using the web to do online dating or just online conversation, communities. But there's somebody here that is needing to get something out of group energy to work with others. I see mature masculine, grief, depression. Shift your focus from restraint and holding back. Two, 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 two. Music reminds me. Get your music on if you're feeling low. Something upbeat that you like. Gratitude. Seven, 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 seven. I think of you all day. Regrets and I'm sorry. So don't blame yourself if somebody has passed away. Uh, death is a graduation and not something to be feared. And our attachment energy is very real and needs to be worked through with compassion, grace, and extreme mercy. And it, it will take time. And one day you may be amazing, and the next day you may not be so amazing. And on those days, you deserve, deserve stability, best friends, lovers, partners, and people that can keep you grounded in your in your earthly essence and your value. Chemistry, yeah, um, your biochemistry may be off. Maybe you have, um, with depression, those biochemical situations in our in our body, we can become more apt to either anxiety or depression or something else. And if it only takes something such as, you know, taking maybe like a St. John's work for a week or two, I've heard it's not great for long-term use. Um, I'm not giving any medical advice to anyone. Uh, do your own research. Consult with your medical professionals. Give and take, sharing, overcompensation and inequality, trauma bonding. Regret, I'm sorry again, local return and reunion with a soulmate that may have taken you for granted. Libra, I want to kiss you. Keep it simple. So somebody's chemistry may be off. There's uh, some type of challenging situations, possibly for some. But we're being pushed into realizing how many options we have to work with others in new ways and how to claim our victory over past depression, past grief, and past um, timing issues or things that didn't get off the ground. And I feel like the timing now is within the next 30 days, one week to 30 days, meeting up with new individuals, This perhaps the stranger energy. Um, and then over the next year, really unlocking something for that 777 portal next year, one year from now. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. This is already longer than I ever mean to be. I appreciate you guys uh, hanging out and listening to the messages. As always, so much gratitude for any like, share, subscribe. You guys are amazing for being on this path with all the others for, you know, getting yourself up every day and doing amazing things out in the world, even if it's just in your intentions. And I feel like it doesn't have to seem grand. It's all in keeping it simple um, and just staying planted in the flow of things so that you will not be rooted up. Um, and yeah, you'll be held in high regard. People have mad respect for you already. So let your let your grace and your amazing essence be present in the universe by coming out and sharing it with others as often as you like. And as you are present in the universe, the universe will sing your tunes. Uh, um, and look inside yourself because the, um, the heart home if, I, if you haven't caught one of my broadcasts before where I talk about this, the heart is the initial, um, the initial impulse of life. That first heartbeat starts the 
chain reaction, the ripple effect across the the waves of where we're broadcasting our own signature happens with that, the harmonics of the heart and how it beats and ripples outward through the five to seven, I think it's seven layers of muscle tissue surrounding the heart in different ways. And the more that we allow our heart harmonics to to align, to be in peace, to be in creative flow and respect and love for self, then those heart harmonics start to overflow with compassion and grace and love and synergetic healing with other individuals. Yeah, universal love is under healing here on the deck. Beautiful. So, yeah, um, all you need to do is just be love to create a legacy that that will be ongoing and will cross-pollinate generations to come. So, to, oh, five, 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 I saw. Take care of yourselves, and I'll be back again soon. Bye.